Hi again. Today I want to take a look at another group of related compounds, the esters and the ethers. Let's begin by taking a look at the esters. Esters can be recognized by a carbon doubly bonded to an oxygen and that same carbon singly bonded to a single oxygen. This interrupts the carbon chain that is formed. We can recognize that functional group and it's called the ester functional group. Ethers, on the other hand, are missing the doubly bonded oxygen. However, they do have that single oxygen that interrupts the carbon chain. And that group there is identified as the functional group for the ester, uh, ether family. If you look at their general formulas, I'm going to let R replace a carbon chain. R could be the same length or different lengths. I'm going to replace these now with their unbonded pairs of electrons to examine a little bit of their properties. Those unbonded pairs of electrons allow for some hydrogen bonding, and they also create very polar sites. And as a result, ethers tend to be soluble in water. Esters, on the other hand, can also form these hydrogen bonds, and, but the presence of the doubly bonded oxygen enhances its ability to bond, not only with itself, but with water molecules, making them more soluble. I'd like to look back at another family that we derived from alcohols, the carboxylic acids, they also have a similar functional group, the carboxyl group, and it also can form hydrogen bonds with water. But that hydrogen that's at the end of the molecule enhances its ability further. So carboxylic acids, if we were to compare these three, would be the most soluble and have the highest boiling points because of the enhanced intermolecular forces. So I've summarized that here in that little note below. If you look at the reactions of esters and ethers, they undergo condensation reactions. You might recall these from earlier, condensation meaning to bring together into one by the removal of a water molecule. So here I'm gonna take a three carbon acid and a two carbon alcohol, and I'll condense them by removing a water from between the two of them. OH contributed from the acid group and the H from the alcohol group. You'll notice now that I placed water as one of the products of this reaction. The carbon now bonds with that oxygen to create the ester. Here I'm going to do a, an isomer of this compound. I'm going to start with a two carbon acid and a three carbon alcohol. Again, I'll remove the water molecule to produce the H2O on the right hand side, the product side, and there's the structure of its corresponding ester. You'll notice it's a different structure. The location of the ester group is slightly different in this second molecule. If we look briefly at the naming of these ester groups, we need to go back to their starting materials. So in the first molecule, I have a three carbon acid, propanoic acid, and ethanol. When I'm naming an ester group, I put O8 at the end of the name. So what comes before the O8 name is the name of the acid that's used. In this case, propanoic acid forms propanoate. And then the alcohol group forms the prefix, I should say um, the suffix, ethyl. So this molecule would be called ethyl propanoate. Again, the ethyl comes from the alcohol and the propa comes from the acid. In my second molecule, I used ethanoic acid and one propanol. Hence, the name of the O8 should be ethanoate and the name of the attached group, one propyl. Let's take a look at how um, the molecules, the ethers are formed. They're formed by joining together two alcohols, again, by a condensation reaction and the removal of water. As you've noticed, sulfuric acid is often used as a catalyst in these reactions. So I remove the water molecule from between the two and they join together. The name of my resulting ether, again, comes from the alcohols that make it up. The longest alcohol dominates the name, meaning it becomes the end name. So this would be called 1-ethoxypropane because propanol was the longest alcohol. So that's a quick tour of these two related families, the ethers and the esters. And remember, a thumbs up or a thumbs down always helps out and feedback's always welcome. Thanks for watching.